Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International with me, Keith Johnston. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, issued Edict 8 of 2020 on adding members to the High Coordinating Committee for Human Rights. The edict stipulates to add new members to the committee as follows. A representative from the Court of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister and a representative from the Cabinet Affairs Ministry. The members shall serve a renewable term as stated in the edict. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, received the US Ambassador to Bahrain, Justin Sibiril, whose diplomatic term in the Kingdom has ended. His Royal Highness highlighted the importance of historical strategic partnership between Bahrain and the US in enhancing stability in the region and achieving the shared interests of the two friendly countries and peoples. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister praised Ambassador Sibiril's efforts and contributions in promoting friendship and cooperation between the two countries to advanced levels at various levels and wished him success in his next missions in the service of his country. The Ambassador expressed his gratitude to His Royal Highness the Prime Minister for his steady support and interest in strengthening the Bahraini-US relations. He praised praise Bahrain's consistent keenness to strengthen the bonds of cooperation in various fields and the Kingdom's support throughout his term in Manama, which has had a great effect in achieving common goals in developing relations. His Majesty the King's Representative for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, National Security Advisor and Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, His Highness Sheikh Nas bin Hamad Al Khalifa, expressed appreciation to the Bahrain Olympic Committee, the BOC board member, head of Bahrain Football Association, BFA Women Committee, Sheikh Hassan bin Khalid Al Khalifa, for obtaining the International Olympic Committee, IOC, Achievement Diploma 2020, after participating in the Women in Sport Award 2020. His Highness Sheikh Nasser stressed that this achievement represents the support Bahraini women achieve from His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, adding that Bahraini women have set remarkable examples by making many external achievements. His Highness expressed the Kingdom's pride in Bahraini women who made their contribution to the Kingdom's development, adding that Sheikh Hesse is one of the female sporting figures who contributed to the development of the women's soccer game in the Kingdom. His Highness Sheikh Nasser wished success to Sheikh Hesse and congratulated her on the occasion. The first Deputy Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sport, President of the Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, chaired the 40th meeting of the General Assembly of the Bahrain Olympic Committee, held remotely in the presence of the committee members and heads and representatives of sports federations and the committee's executive body. His Highness Sheikh Khalid praised the achievements and gains made by the committee under the patronage of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and with the support of the representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, National Security Advisor and Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, His Highness Sheikh Nas bin Hamad Al Khalifa. He noted the great efforts made by the National Federations after 2019 witnessed exceptional and historical achievements for Bahraini sports which culminated in winning 683 medals, including 304 gold medals. His Highness Sheikh Khalid praised the efforts of the sports federations, stressing the importance of intensifying efforts to make new achievements and better results. He also praised the distinguished efforts of the executive body of the committee, led by Secretary General Mohammed Hassan al Nisif and its employees, which resulted in the development of the committee's work. The Deputy Prime Minister and Chairman of the Supreme Committee for Information and Communications Technology, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Mubarak Al Khalifa, chaired virtually the committee's 15th meeting. 
The meeting reviewed a report by the Information and E-Government Authority, the IGA, on the accomplished services and plans and priorities towards a comprehensive transformation in government services. The transformation is in line with the Cabinet's decision to assign ministries and government agencies to accelerate the transition to online systems to provide e-services following the achievement of 54% of the 817 public services in more than 30 public and private agencies, which enhances the protection of customers without the need for the physical presence in service centres. Work is being carried out to complete the electronic transformation in the public prosecution, the health sector and e-payment, in addition to the services in the Ministry of Interior and services related to dealing with the coronavirus pandemic in the health, humanitarian and charitable dimensions, including the Royal Humanitarian Foundation. The committee also reviewed the major criteria adopted for the comprehensive electronic transformation, mainly the electronic link between the government agencies and the qualifications and experience required to support such services and deal with customers' exceptional cases. His Highness Sheikh Mubarak Mohammed stressed the importance of coordination among government agencies to complete the plans for government transformation and the preparation of a roadmap for each public entity separately, eventually resulting in comprehensive electronic transformation. The roadmap should include views on reducing the cost of operating government centres affiliated with those entities. With regard to technical initiatives in the Government Action Plan that include 44 initiatives to be implemented between 2019 and 2022, the committee note that 16 have been completed. They include the development of services and electronic applications, information and communications technology, governance, open data, government notices, the transfer towards cloud computing, the national system for appointments and applications for the protection and security of information. These initiatives contribute to achieving sustainable development through the adoption of modern technologies in various government sectors. During the opening session of the Joint Dialogue Seminar for the Shura and Representatives Councils, themed the supervisory and legislative role in parliamentary action, which was held on the occasion of the International Day of Parliamentarism, the Chairman of the Shura Council and Speaker of the Representatives Councils affirmed that the Legislative Councils have contributed to promoting the concepts of democratic action and the consolidation of its principles expressing the pride in the accomplishments achieved by the Legislative Authority in Bahrain in each legislative chapter. The Representatives Council Speaker, Fazia bint Abdullah Zainal, affirmed that Bahrain achieved many accomplishments with the support of His Majesty, King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, in promoting the comprehensive sustainable development march that Bahrain is witnessing. She added that the Legislative Authority in Bahrain, with its two councils, continues to have a prominent and active role in achieving the goals of sustainable development, legislation and supervision, empowering and advancing women, supporting youth, ensuring quality and justice, responsible freedom, peace and coexistence, and obtaining comprehensive care in various fields, especially health and education. For his part, the chairman of the Shura Council, Ali bin Saleh Asale, noted that by the end of this year, Bahrain will have completed 17 years of its membership in the Inter-Parliamentary Union, stressing the importance of the Legislative Authority to clarify positions and express opinions on various local, regional and international issues. He also noted the importance of highlighting the developments witnessed by the Kingdom, which reflects its real image and its position status in regards to development, economy and politics. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif bin Rashid al Ziani, received the US Special Representative for Iran and Senior Advisor to the Secretary of State, Brian Hook, during his visit to the Kingdom of Bahrain as part of his tour of the region. During the meeting, the two parts reviewed the historic friendly relations and strategic partnership between Bahrain and the US in all areas, as well as ways to develop them and to bring mutual benefits to the two friendly countries and people. The two parts also discussed the continuous efforts exerted by the United States to maintain the security and stability of the region and to address the political and security challenges threatening the global interests in the region. In addition, they discussed issues of common concern, including the Iranian interventions in the internal affairs of the countries of the region and the efforts exerted by the American administration to extend the arms embargo on Iran and to address the repercussions and effects of Iran's nuclear program. The meeting was attended by the Ministry's Under Secretary for International Affairs, Dr. Sheikh Abdullah bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, USA Ambassador to Bahrain Justin Sibiril, and the delegation accompanying the US envoy. 
The Minister of Foreign Affairs also had a press conference with the US Special Representative for Iran, who has known an official visit to a number of countries in the region to discuss the latest political and security developments. The Minister affirmed the Kingdom's appreciation of the continuous efforts exerted by the US to preserve the security and stability of the countries of the region and defend their interests, highlighting the efforts of the US Navy in protecting international trade and navigation routes in the Arabian Gulf, Arabian Sea, Red Sea and Bab al-Mandab. Alziani noted the meeting of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, a Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad al-Khalifa, with the US representative for Iran, where they affirmed the strength of the cooperation and strategic partnership between Bahrain and the US. The Minister of Foreign Affairs also noted the discussion session he held with Hook, which dealt with the relations of cooperation and joint coordination between the two friendly countries where he stressed the importance of the efforts undertaken by the US to extend the arms embargo to Iran and to tighten the sanctions imposed on it due to Iran's behaviour in the region, as it provided arms to the militia in Yemen, Lebanon and Iraq, and its continued interference in the internal affairs of the countries of the region, in addition to its insistence on not adhering to the principles of the UN Charter. Dr Alziani pointed out that Bahrain firmly faced all Iranian interference in its internal affairs where the Bahraini competent security services were able to thwart many Iranian terrorist schemes and arrest members of the terrorist organisations entrusted with carrying out these plans with the support of the Iranian Revolutionary Guard and Hezbollah. He also pointed at Iran's support for terrorists and extremists in Bahrain with weapons, explosives and training, which resulted in the killing of 35 civilians and a security officer and wounding about 3,500 civilians and security personnel in addition to nearly 29,000 sabotaging acts. He said that the two sides underscored the necessity of facing Iranian interference in the internal affairs of the countries of the region, stopping the direct support provided by Iran to Hezbollah, terrorist groups, extremist militia, and to the Houthi group in Yemen, and ending its attempt to impede the efforts aimed at reaching a political solution to the Yemeni crisis. They also agreed that Iran stands behind the hostilities towards Saudi Arabia by attacking the Saudi Aramco oil installations and by the Houthi bombing of populated areas with ballistic missiles and Iranian-made drones. Dr al Ziani reaffirmed the support of the Kingdom to the American efforts to address the repercussions of the Iranian nuclear file, including Iran's continuation of its programme to develop ballistic missiles, stressing the need for Iran to adhere to the agreement on its nuclear programme. In this regard, he noted that the GCC countries have always demanded that the Arab Gulf region and the Middle East be made free of all weapons of mass destruction, including nuclear weapons. He also stressed that Bahrain has always been calling for normal relations with Iran based on the principles of good neighbourliness, non-interference in internal affairs and the need to amicability and peacefully resolve disputes through constructive dialogue, which reflects the Kingdom's keenness on achieving peace and stability in the region. For his part, who praised the vision of His Majesty, King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, and promoting and establishing the values of tolerance and religious freedom in Bahrain, hailing the Kingdom's achievements in various fields. He also highlighted the strength of relations between the two countries, lauding the strategic role of Bahrain in enhancing stability and security, making the Kingdom the best ally in the region for the US. He expressed pleasure in meeting His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and the Minister of Foreign Affairs. Who could address the weapons smuggled by Iran to its proxies in Bahrain, stressing the necessity of extending the arms embargo on Iran, as this embargo has lasted for 13 years and has been effective in undermining the access of weapons exported by Iran to its proxies in the region and in Bahrain, emphasising that the expiration of this embargo will enable Iran to strengthen its stockpiles of arms and enhance its maritime capabilities, which threatens navigation and trade. He said that the international community should listen to the countries of the region that refuse to lift the arms embargo, stressing that lifting the arms embargo will undermine security in the region, which is not accepted by the UN and is considered a breach of everything written by the United Nations Charter, aiming to enhance security and stability. Hook also stated that the US will work to prevent the lift of the arms embargo in Iran until Iran changes its behaviour and stops supporting terrorist organisations and attacking its neighbours in the region. He noted that the US added that Iranian-backed organisations the Suraya al to its terror lists, which is responsible for the number of terrorist acts in Bahrain, as they carried out a bombing attack in 2014 that killed two policemen and another one in 2017, which resulted in the death of a policeman, 
confirming that Bahrain and the US will continue their partnership in order to combat such terrorist organisations. At the conclusion of the meeting, the governments of the United States and the Kingdom of Bahrain released the following joint statement. The United States and the Kingdom of Bahrain share a strong and enduring commitment to countering Iranian aggression. Iran has sought to undermine the stability and security of Bahrain by fermenting sectarian tensions and providing arms to proxy groups and terrorists. Despite these actions, Bahrain has remained true to its values and continues to prioritise peaceful coexistence and religious freedom for all its people. The United States remains committed to Bahrain's security and to a deep and effective partnership to counter Iranian-backed terror. In recognising the grave threat posed by the Iranian arms transfers in the region and in Bahrain specifically, the United States and Bahrain call upon the United Nations Security Council to extend the arms embargo on Iran before it expires. An embargo is an important tool to counter Iran's proliferation of arms to proxies where it promotes greater regional stability and holds Iran accountable for its actions, including its attack on the Saudi oil facilities in September 2019. If the international community fails to extend the embargo, the Kingdom of Bahrain and neighbouring partners will suffer the consequences of a destabilising arms race. The Security Council must uphold its responsibility to maintain international peace and security and extend the arms embargo on Iran. The Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, announced the extension of the stimulus measures to support private sector jobs and citizens. The Minister stated that in line with the Royal Directives, the Government decided to take additional stimulus measures following consultation with the Legislative Authority and the Bahrain Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Over a three-month period, starting from July 2020, the Government will support 50% of salaries for insured citizens employed in the private sector working for companies most affected by the coronavirus COVID-19 under a scheme administered by the Ministry of Labour and in cooperation with the relevant entities. For the same three-month period, the government will meet citizens' domestic electricity costs for primary residents up to the full cost of the same period for the preceding year. Economic sectors most adversely affected by the repercussions of COVID-19 will be further supported by the Labour Fund, Tamkeen, according to the controls and conditions approved by its Board of Directors. The Minister of Finance highlighted that the necessary and targeted economy interventions are reviewed on an ongoing basis, expressing the readiness to make adjustments or take additional steps where emerging pressures or particular sector requirements are anticipated. Sheikh Salman added that this additional package of measures will further reduce the pressures on householders and families across the Kingdom, at the same time supporting many jobs of those employed in the private sector as their employers continue to respond to the unique economic challenges posed by COVID-19. He noted that Bahrain's COVID-19 response objectives remain unchanged to protect the health and employment of citizens and the long-term strength of the economy. The Minister noted that the government remains committed to early, targeted and effective economic intervention and support. The Minister of Foreign Affairs also had a press conference with a US Special Representative for Iran who is on an official visit to a number of countries in the region to discuss the latest political and security developments. We are fortunate to see now the United States really taking steps towards uh, extending the, the embargo on, uh, on the weapon systems of, of Iran and by doing so it's giving hope and trying to build hope for the region to achieve peace and, and security and stability as, as a whole. Uh, by, by taking the leadership in this, in this area, we are sending the, 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 the right message to the people of the region, especially the, the young generations, that there, the, the international community is really looking after the region to, to give the region a chance to restore stability and security and hopefully some kind of prosperity. And that's why we are asking uh, the, the Security Council to truly stand 
up and uh, help and assist in achieving such objective for the peoples of the region. Uh, we are asking the international community, and we, I mean the people of the region, asking them with the leadership of the United States is to really stand by and say, and stand up and say we need to extend it, extend the embargo, because if Iran gets more weapons, we know what it will do with them. It will be causing more destruction, more refugees, more loss of hope for the people. So that's our call, and that's where we, we can uh, direct our, our, our effort. One of the things that impresses me so much about Bahrain is they're always first. Uh, whenever we have some threat to peace and security uh, that we think needs addressing, Bahrain is always early and, um, and, and always wants to know what can we do together. And it's always a pleasure to work with Bahrain. Um, I'm also here because uh, of our diplomatic efforts to extend the UN arms embargo on the Islamic Republic of Iran. Uh, as the foreign minister said in his remarks, this is an important national security issue for Bahrain. And it also is for the rest of the Gulf. In Bahrain and elsewhere around the region, Iran continues its covert efforts to foment sectarian tensions and to fuel terrorism. The Ministry of Labour and Social Development is preparing to oversee the implementation of Decree 3 of 2013 regarding a ban on afternoon work in open spaces throughout Bahrain, which will start on Wednesday from noon until 4pm throughout July and August. The decision is in line with Bahrain's concern to protect workers from occupational diseases and injuries, especially during the summer, searing temperatures and high humidity. The Ministry stated that it will closely monitor the implementation of the decision by around 30,000 companies and establishments. A group of inspection teams from the Ministry of Labour and Social Development will conduct field monitoring tours on the targeted sites. The Ministry's inspection teams will verify the violations and take the necessary measures in this regard. The Ministry of Health said today that the number of coronavirus cases has reached 5,227 with 411 recoveries and 534 registered new cases and three deaths, expressing its condolences to the families of the deceased and calling on everyone to adhere to the rules. The Ministry affirmed the importance of following instructions, such as washing one's hands with soap on a regular basis, along with avoiding shaking hands and close contact. Moreover, covering the nose and mouth when sneezing and avoiding public spaces when possible.